I'm Richard Clark. I record these talks every day as a way to deepen my inquiry. Listen each day and deepen your own practice. Welcome. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book, Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. Today is from Talk 545. A was once badly distracted by sexual thoughts. He fought against them. He fasted three days and prayed to God so he might be free from such thoughts. Finally, he decided to ask Sri Bhagavan about it. Sri Bhagavan listened to him and remained silent for about two minutes. Then he said, well, the thoughts distracted you and you fought against them. That is good. Why do you continue to think of them now? Whenever such thoughts arise, consider to whom they arise and they will flee away from you. In this dialogue, the questioner shares with Sri Ramana Maharshi a struggle with distracting sexual thoughts. They describe how they attempted to overcome these thoughts through fasting and prayer, and yet the mental preoccupation persists. Seeking guidance, they turn to the Maharshi for help. Ramana's response reflects his central teaching of self-inquiry. After silently listening, he acknowledges the effort made to resist the thoughts, but redirect the questioner's attention with a gentle, pivotal question. Why do you continue to think of them now? This immediately points out the paradox of fighting thoughts. They linger because the mind keeps giving them attention, even in opposition. The Maharshi then advises a practical approach. When such thoughts arise, instead of engaging with or resisting them, ask, to whom do these thoughts arise? This method shifts the focus from the thoughts themselves to the underlying observer. The Maharshi's core teaching is that the thoughts arise in the mind, which functions as a tool of the ego, the sense of I that identifies with body, mind, and personality. By questioning to whom do these thoughts arise, one naturally arrives at the answer, to me. The next step in self-inquiry is to ask, who am I? This inward questioning aims to dissolve the identification with the ego and reveal the deeper reality of the self, the pure awareness that is untouched by thoughts or external distractions. The advice also illuminates a profound truth. Thoughts gain power only when you give them attention, whether through indulgence or resistance. By investigating their source, thoughts lose their grip. This practice is not about suppression, but about transcending the ego's fall by turning inward. In practical terms, the Maharshi is guiding the questioner to stop fighting with the mind and instead recognize the nature of the one who knows the thoughts. This method brings a quiet detachment allowing distracting thoughts to naturally subside. Over time, the effort to inquire leads to a state of inner stillness, where the self shines 
unobstructed, and such disturbances no longer hold sway. Ramana Maharshi's teachings here is both liberating and practical, pointing to the direct path of self-inquiry as the means to freedom from mental distractions and identifications with the ego. So know yourself and be always free and at peace. In 40 verses on reality, Ramana Maharshi explains the nature of the self, the ultimate reality, and self-inquiry. My new book, with my comments and inquiry questions, opens these teachings up and brings them into your practice and experience. Available now from Amazon. Link in the video description. These videos bring Ramana's teachings into your direct experience. Click subscribe to see more. Click thumbs up to like and send questions and start a dialogue with the comments 